Hello everyone, welcome to my channel ASP.NET Core and today uh, I'm going to uh, teach you what is the three-tier architecture and with example, you know, so uh, three-tier architecture is actually consists of, you know, that uh, three layers, presentation layer, business logic layer and data access layer. The presentation layer handles the user interface, the business layer layer contains the application logic and the data access layer is responsible for interacting with the database. Okay, so this architecture is easy to maintain and uh, test, but it can become complex as the application grows, you know. So, uh, first of all, uh, you know that uh, that is the first of all design the uh, presentation layer. Then after you can go for the data access layer and then after you can go for the business logic layer. So, uh, first of all, just I'm going to tell you about data access layer. Okay. So what inside the data access layer actually, actually data access layer is directly communicate with the database. So uh, in the data access layer, we will use a model. Uh, I'm going to use uh, application DB context and uh, that is the repo and then after we can use repository. So the third layer is first of all, just I'm going to discuss that is business logic layer and uh, okay. So just I'm going to describe first of all about data access layer. Okay, so let's discuss. This layer handles the data access and database operations. It should be independent of the presentation layer and the business logic layer for uh, you can see. So uh, in the data access layer, first of all, just I'm going to um, design uh, models okay so just right click on the data access layer first of all and add three folders in the data access layer okay so And you know that uh, the first uh, folder is the entities that second folder is the data and the third folder is that is interface. Okay. So uh, you know that in the data uh, layer, this layer is responsible for handling the storage and retrieval. It should be responsible for performing CRUD, create, read, update and delete operation on the data and should encapsulate that data logic. The data layer can be implemented using entity framework, Dapper or any other data access technology. It should expose interfaces or repositories that the application layer can use to access the data. Okay. So uh, here we have an example. So first of all, design entity. Uh, here I'm going to uh, add only the customer entity. Okay. So this is very pretty simple techniques to uh, design a project using the three tier architecture okay so okay so here uh, i am going to add a new uh, context class that is application db context class under the data section so So here I'm going to uh, use application DB context directly in the data access layer, but there is a lots of pattern. Uh, there is lots of techniques to uh, use a uh, data access layer actually. So you know that a data layer is responsible for handling data storage and retrieval. So the data layer can be implemented using various technologies such as entity framework, Dapper or Radio.net. Here are some common patterns used in the data layer. First one is a repository uh, pattern that I am using uh, here. So this pattern is used to abstract the data access layer from the uh, rest of the application by providing a set of interfaces for accessing data. It provides a way to uh, perform CRUD operation on the data and abstract away the implementation detail of the underlying data storage technology. This makes it easier to change the data storage technology without affecting the rest of the application. So that is the repository pattern that I'm using in the uh, in the uh, data access layer. 
okay so first of all you know that uh, entity is clear so customer uh, we have and in the data uh, directory we have a application db context so just i'm going to design application db context that is simply uh, inherited from the db context class and now uh, uh, adding a customer class in the in that class okay so the next one is to uh, add i uh, customer repository okay so uh, that is the repository pattern that i'm uh, using okay so the next one pattern you can use it uh, here uh, as a data access layer that is the unit of work pattern this pattern is used to manage the transactional uh, uh, transactional boundaries of a set of related operations it ensures that all operations are either committed or rolled back as a single unit uh, of work the unit of work pattern is commonly used to conjunction with the repository pattern okay so that is the second method to use it so by using the repository and unit of work pattern the data layer is abstracted away from the rest of the application making it easier to change the data storage technology without affecting the rest of application additionally these patterns make it easier to test the data layer in isolated without requiring to leave a database connections okay so this is the technique so here i am using only repository pattern uh, okay and only one uh, methods just i am going to tell you that is the data uh, that is the get customer as in okay that's fine that is very pretty simple uh, um, way to design it so everything is clear uh, about the data access layer now just go for the business logic layer actually business logic layer is implemented from the data access layer okay so uh, now tell me more about uh, you can say that uh, business layer okay so business layer or you can say that uh, this layer is sits between the presentation layer and the data layer this is responsible for handling business logics and performing operations on the data it should uh, contain all the necessary logic to manipulate the data and perform an, an any necessary validations the goal of this layer is to make it easy to change the underlying data layer without affecting the presentation layer typically the application layer consists of servicing services that interact with the data layer through repositories these services should be independent of the underlying data storage technology and should be testable in the isolation some common pattern used in the application layer uh, include the service layer pattern or the command query responsible segregation pattern that is the cqrs pattern that's i am using in the uh, business logic layer so you know that that about the business logic layer okay so uh, here i am using customer services i customer service and uh, customer service here i am using i customer repository to implement the customer services okay so if you know uh, if you want to know about and more about the uh, this layer service layer you can say that this pattern is used to encapsulate the application logic and provided a single entry point for the presentation layer to interact with the data layer it provide a set of services that can be used to perform operations on the data such as cred operation or the business logic operations so this time i'm going to use it here and the, if you want to know about the command query responsibility segregation in that layer that is the business logic layer this pattern is used to separate the command that is the write operations from the query that is the read operations uh, it provides separate models and handles for handling commands and queries respectively these patterns can be used for optimizing read heavy applications okay so that's fine i i think it is very enough to explain about the uh, business logic layer the next one is the presentation layer you know that uh, the customer uh, controller is now i am using and you know that uh, actually business logic layer sits between the uh, presentation layer and uh, uh, and uh, data access layer so here i'm using uh, service layer or you can say that a business logic layer now uh, the next one uh, you know that a presentation layer and if you know about uh, more about so finally we will go for the next uh, that is the design a view for the index action method 
that is the index section method where I am I'm going to design a list of uh, customers just I'm going to add. Okay. So uh, if you know more about the presentation layer, actually presentation layer is, uh, you know that, if you know about the presentation layer, uh, you know that presentation layer is responsible for handling the user interface and user input and output. It should be kept as thin as possible and should not contain any business logic. The goal of this layer is to simply display the data and provide a way for the user to interact with the application. Some common technologies used in the presentation layer of an application core application include Razor Pages, MVC and Blazor. So that is the mean of the uh, presentation layer. So here I am going to uh, add scaffolding in this uh, index section method to design this. Okay. Now, uh, the next one is to uh, go for the migration as well and uh, the next one is to add uh, dependency injection. So, uh, what uh, actually uh, ASP.NET Core provide built-in dependency injection. You know that. So, uh, if you know about dependency injection. So, uh, dependency injection is a design pattern used in software engineering to implement inversion of control in application. It is technique where the dependencies of an object are injected from outside the object rather than having the object created themselves itself. Uh, them itself. In an ASP.NET Core application, DI is used to manage object dependencies and provide instances of these objects to the application component that require them. The DI container is responsible for creating instance of object and injecting their dependencies in as a scoped. Okay, so here I'm using scoped right here. And uh, here we have two dependencies that is the I customer service and I customer repository. So first of all, I customer repository is used. So according to the top down approach, this time I'm going to add I customer repository first and then use i customer service and that uh, interfaces are actually implemented by these classes that is customer repository and the customer service okay everything is um, now now the next one is to uh, implement a connection string and if you know that uh, So, uh, just I'm going to tell you about application DB context class. Actually, why I am registering here, I application DB context right here. So, application DB context class is a class in entity framework core that is used to represent a session with the database. It, uh, it is a subclass of the DB context class which provide a high level API for interacting with the database in an object oriented way. The application DB context class is typically defined in the data layer of an ASP.NET Core application. It is uh, and it inherits from DB context. It contains a DB set property for each entity uh, in the database, which allow us to perform CRUD, that is the create, read, update, and delete operation on the entities. Okay, so everything is clear. Now the next one is to add a DB context with the SQL Server. Okay. So, uh, if you want to know that uh, to add an instance of the DB context with the SQL Server, you first need to install the necessary packages. You will need to install the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server and Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools. Actually, SQL Server provided the uh, interface to create a database by using the SQL Server. Okay, and the tools package is actually responsible for migrations. Okay, so uh, once you have installed these required packages, you add to instance of TB context with the SQL Server by following these steps. These are you can see in this uh, video. So define a class that inherits from the DB context class and provide a DB set property of the each entity in the database that is already existing in the uh, 
data access layer. You know that. So after you want to configure that DB context class in the program.cs file. So in the configure service method of your start uh, or you, of your program.cs file or a class, you need to configure your DB context class to use SQL Server. Here is an example you can see. Okay. So actually use SQL Server is a, a method. So if you if you know that U SQL Server is not exist, I mean to say that if you have a installed package SQL Server, but you are not uh, actually resolve this types of problem because actually I want to register DB context instead of the dependency injection. So here you can see that add scope. Now here I'm using add DB context instead of add scoped so that you can see. Okay, so that is the three tier architecture. Uh, and if you know more about the three tier architecture, you can ask me by the comment and uh, which uh, uh, architecture is the best architecture for your application. Just I'm going to suggest you if you uh, comment me and uh, I will design the all remaining applications one by one. I am uh, too much. Uh, excited to design a school uh, project uh, please uh, students carefully listen me uh, please see uh, please watch all the videos of the school management system because that is the arp project and if you are the mono if you want to design a monolithic architecture then you can see inventory project because that project is actually built on monolithic architecture so everything inside in the you can say that everything inside it in a single application. So that is the uh, three tier architecture where you can see business layer, presentation layer and the data access layer. Everything you know that. So thank you guys for watching this video and keep watching all other videos which is related to ESP.NET Core. And please watch this full video because uh, the uh, remaining whole video, uh, video session because you know that add migration initial that is the migration process after migration you have to update the database and then after you can see uh, lots of steps you have okay like uh, you know that uh, wonderful steps you you will know that that is the migration steps and build the database and uh, if you want uh, you uh, then um, linking in the layout.css level file and then after run, run your project. So thank you guys for watching. And please don't forget, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon to get the latest notification about uh, and income uh, coming soon videos. Okay, thank you very much.